All right, hello everybody. Today um, we will be talking about ASN1. We are going really to just scratch the surface. So ASN1 is pretty old standard. It's like 35 years old. It's still in active use, so you can uh, meet it daily in things like SNMP, LDAPs, etc. The main motivation behind ASN1 is uh, to allow exchange of data between different systems, where different systems means not only software, but also hardware, right? So it consists from two main components. Uh, one are obviously types. So are you transferring integers or booleans? And the other one is serialization. So how you represent the data on the wire. You can think about SN1 in a similar way as you would think about WSDL or protocol buffers, JSON schemas, etc. So let's talk about uh, the syntax a little bit. Uh, so it's case sensitive, uh, keywords are capitalized, Underscore is forbidden, and uh, if you need to assign, which you probably need, you will use this double colon equal operator, um, a little bit of resemblance of Pascal there, right? So basic types, as you would imagine, we have booleans, integers, um, uh, enumerated, etc. where enumerated are basically uh, specified like keywords or, or values, as you can see on the on the example. Also, you have real numbers, where the reals uh, can be also written in, in the way of uh, exponent and mantissa. Uh, you can also restrict the types. Um, so, for example, you can restrict the integers, the values, into ranges. Uh, you can define sets uh, from integers as well, or from other, uh, other types, obviously. And uh, you have these enumerated values. Now, when you see on the enumerated, you see that they are represented as an integers at the end of the day, um, and, and you are mapping them into uh, sort of like symbols. Um, you can also define uh, default value with the keyword default. And, um, you know, I mean, the, the whole thing doesn't stop with integers and booleans. Uh, you have obviously strings and octet strings and, and you know, binary strings, etc., or bit strings. Uh, also, in later versions, they've added, uh, for example, UTF-8 string to obviously represent UTF um, characters or UTF uh, string. The most used, I would say, is the sequence, uh, which is similar to struct in C. Um, so here you can see an example of uh, how you can define, um, you know, structure which is going to uh, talk about the plane or provide information about the plane. So we have defined uh, attributes, uh, brand name and production year. And you can see that, you know, I can nest different types into the sequence. You can also uh, nest sequences into the sequences. And then my plane can be sequence of plane, right? And this is something slightly like uh, confusing there. So the sequence is the struct piece, a sequence of is different type, which is sort of like array of, uh, of those sequences. If you, if you don't care about the order, you can, you can use sets. Uh, so set of is uh, un, like unordered uh, sequence of. Uh, there is also something similar to unions from C uh, that's called choice. Um, so you can think about it as a little bit of like abstraction uh, from object-oriented programming. So uh, uh, here our vehicle description or my vehicle down there can be any of car, train or plane, uh, which are both or uh, all of them are sequences um, where the plane is the one which we have shown at the, at the beginning of the slide. And the actual value depends on how you set it, right? So in this particular example, I've again used the plane because we have definition at the top. So I set my vehicle to be a plane uh, and being a Boeing 777 produced in 69. So far, we have been talking about um, abstract way how to represent the data. To actually send the data over the wire, we need to encode them. And there is a plenty of uh, encoding rules which describe different formats of how the data are encoded. Also, you can define your own rules. So probably the most common encoding rule is the basic encoding rule, uh, which is built around this notion of TLV object, where the T stands for type, L for length, and V for value. Uh, the key concept here is that you can nest, uh, so basically value can be another TLV object. Let's talk type, uh, that's the T from TLV. 
as you can see it's a byte where the first two bits are class which you can imagine roughly similar to uh, what a scope would be uh, bit number five is form primitive or constructed that has impact on how the length is computed uh, basically in the primitive form we know the LAN uh, on the constructed forms we don't know the LAN and the rest of the byte is tag which is going to give you direct information about the primitive type or it's going to be composite it also can include uh, the ordering information which we'll touch up on in a second LAN can be encoded in three different ways if you can fit the value of LAN into seven bits then you can set the eight bit to zero and just use the rest of the byte for encoding the value if you cannot fit it there then you will set the, the eight bit to one and the rest will be number of bytes which will follow this particular byte and will encode the value in cases where you have constructed types so the type of bits 5 is set to 1 you need to finish the whole transaction so last two bytes of the value will be two null bytes null byte is basically byte with all zeros simple example uh, let's encode like boolean false and as you see you need three bytes for sending uh, the false value right slightly more challenging example here so we have sequence with two attributes name and, and right answer and we assign the name to dt1 and right answer to 42. on the right hand side you can see how this is going to be actually encoded the top tlv will be the sequence and the value of that will be two uh, other tlvs where the first tlv will be the variable string as expected and the second one will be the integer uh, length of the integer is one length of the string is three because it consists from three characters and the total length of the sequence is eight because you have to count all the bytes including uh, type and length bytes uh, from uh, the nested values for showing how a tag works uh, let's start with the JSON example on the left hand side so in JSON we define these width height and title and as you as you uh, as you know from experience with JSON you can reorder uh, the values and nothing is going to change because it behaves basically like a map like a hash the equivalent definition in ASN1 could be the sequence where we define again with height and title now when we serialize the sequence with values uh, 640 and 480 and developers at work everybody will understand or everything will understand that the value of width is 640 and value of height is uh, 480 because they are going in sequence in the previous example we have actually seen that on the wire we don't transfer any names so the order on the wire is important but the question is what is going to happen if we mark uh, some of the attributes within the sec sequence as an optional attribute if we do the same thing in JSON so we omit some of the attributes nothing is going to change right because we have the names transferred over the wire but in bear we will basically break things so not to break things there is a concept of tags where tags are going to give us order within the sequence you can add text manually as shown here so we mark width as sequence 0 or tag 0 and height as a tag 1 so when the information gets serialized and let's assume that we set only height we will tag the integer with tag number 1 that will later give us information on when we deserialize the information that we are actually transferring height you can do it manually or you can actually let uh, the compiler to do that for you so you can set this automatic tagging which is going to basically do the same thing for you to demonstrate um, i'm going to use this as some playground so you can see here uh, here is our schema i can compile it cool no errors and here we are making a variable my image type image and set the width to 1080 and title to dt1 if we encode it you can see here that we got the automated tag of zero and obviously tag two for 
uh, for the string and and the zero is here right so so this one is the tag zero um, let's make it more visible so if I change it to height we expect this byte to go to one right because this one will be uh, tag one integer tag one let's try and we see it's true here we uh, got uh, one as mentioned previously there are other encoding rules defined in the standard so one is packet encoding rule which is making every uh, part of TLV optional so you can skip you know what is not necessary and it's especially trying to address situations where you need um, unnecessary bytes or where you need a lot of bytes to encode simple information like integer or boolean. One of human readable encodings uh, would be XML encoding rule which is using XML for encoding data. If you are interested more into ASN1, uh, there are two excellent books uh, and both of them are available for free. Um, I will post the links to the description and also uh, you can use this ASN1 playground I've showcased. Uh, also, I will put the link into the description. And why to bother with ASN1, you may ask? We are getting a lot of data from telcos actually encoded with BER and you have two ways how to approach that, right? You can write a parser, which is going to be tailored for the binary stream, and that's not going to be very robust. Or you can actually take the ASN1 description from the vendors like Ericsson and uh, pass it through uh, the pipeline to get uh, stops in your favorite language, like Python, for example, and just parse it naturally. So where there is an update from the vendor, uh, we can just update the stops and everything is going to work. Uh, we are going to have a separate talk about it, um, so stay tuned. Anyway, thank you very much for your attention and see you next time.